three of them that were on the trailer washed off, ready to go. All that's left, five in the truck. And I will pull them off after I mill those. All of that pile of wood that was here is now in one vertical stack, braced to keep it from toppling. I'll use all this room to put my new lumber, which is coming off of all of these. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, these. This one is already up on here. Log stops are all low enough. Half. One. Half. Two. Two and a half. Makes my sawmill happy. See lots of people saying you should always approach your final height coming up to put final tension on the cables. Whereas if you're coming down, there might be a little slack and it might drift. I figure as much as these things vibrate and as heavy as it is, it's not going to matter a measurable amount either way. And instead of making a deep first cut to create a square cant, I start by skimming off the top of the log and then I'll go down three quarters of an inch once or maybe even twice to give me boards I can resaw into stickers. You never have enough stickers. The blade is beginning to get dull, but I'll leave it on until I finish cutting through the bark, and then I'll change it. Two inch poly pipe over the log stops makes turning the log easy and it's a heck of a lot easier than installing roller bearings on the log stops. This is one of those times when having a second pair of hands or a helper would be nice. More stickers.
I need to go down another one. But I need to change blades first. You see this is pulling the fibers. It's not cutting them cleanly. Most of the teeth will not scratch my thumbnail. No reason to run dull blades when I got all these clean sharpens up here. Some sawyers say they don't use the blade guard because it makes it difficult to get blades on and off. I don't have a problem. I hang dull blades and sharp blades in the sawmill shed. It's exposed to high humidity, so I coat them in oil and the sawmill coats them in sawdust. I form the blade into a dog bone with a big loop on the drive side. And I check the condition of the belt. The belt is pretty clean. My blade scrapers and sawdust deflector keep most of the sawdust out of the wheelhouse and keep the belt relatively clean. I take the slack out of the tensioning system and give the wheels a few turns to make sure the blade is tracking correctly before I add tension and check it again. After a few turns at full tension the blade is tracking correctly and runs more quietly. Tracking is true. Of course, I forgot which hole was lined up for the next cut. Oh boy. Did I say hole four? Let's see if that uh, hits the top. Well, oh, hole four is where we were. Knowing which hole the last cut was made at tells me where I need to put it for the next cut. For three quarters of an inch, that's down one half turn plus one hole. Yeah, that's where we were. So now we go down to hole three. That'll be another three quarter inch slice. We saw this for siding. Let me get some stickers out of it too. I wish I'd seen this plastic pipe trick a year and a half ago. I was nearly halfway down the log when I realized I should have cut three quarters of an inch less deep and I'd get an extra board out of it. I know you're not supposed to back up, 
but if you do it with the blade spinning very slowly and carefully and if it pinches at all come back here and wedge it up to create a bigger kerf you can get away with it. I crank back down to the same hole where I started the previous cut and the blade enters the kerf perfectly. And this is a matter of going down by three quarters until I get a can. The three quarter inch siding I need can be random width. So I'll just slice down by three quarters and resaw the thin slabs to get my boards. The cant is short enough that I don't really need the plastic pipes to roll it. I could have raised the stops instead, but slipping on pieces of plastic is a lot faster. I'm going to make all of this three quarter siding. No, I'm not. I'll take two three quarters off of here, roll it. One cut off of here and three, three and a halfs, roll it, 15 or 18 two by fours. Even with a sharp blade, the cuts in this cant are stringy. I think it must be hemlock. You probably know more about wood characteristics than I do, so let me know if I'm wrong. Okay, I'm three and five eighths on the two by fours. Six and seven sixteenths here. Should have given, given this a sixteenth more, but that's okay. Close enough for the kind of things I've built. What I'm doing here is skimming the top off both of these so the remainders will be evenly divisible by an inch and a half when finished. No, this isn't a fancy panning camera shot. I just set the camera down on the cant and it's vibrating.
close as I can go without removing boards. Got a six inch throat on this thing, I think. Notice that these are popping up just a little bit. Actually, that's not bad. Not bad at all. What I'm thinking when I take these off, I might flip these over. Uh, take some tension off the other side. Oh, right at the piss almost. So yeah, I'll do that. Right now, I gotta move some boards. I don't know if cleaning off sawdust is important before stacking and stickering, but this way I won't have to breathe clouds of dry sawdust when I unstack the boards later. Get longer stickers. Normally the rule is stickers the same kind of wood you're stacking on them. Uh, it's not cabinet wood. I don't care that much. But I will cut some more stickers. If I peer into the future, I think I see a time when I might regret having a sawmill this close to the ground. The inside board is now clean on the top side, so I flip it over to avoid wasting wood. I come down about an inch from the previous cut, and that'll give me three long stickers, three quarters of an inch by, it doesn't matter. What matters is the three quarters. Thank you. 
It may not always be apparent, but I do look for ways to make my job easier. I thought, why not cut stickers to length before I resaw the boards? Well, that worked, but I don't know that it saved me any time or effort. The remaining boards weren't tall enough to do that trick again, so I'd cut them into stickers the old-fashioned way. That was the hard part, getting up. Yeah. Okay. These are small mountain stickers. Five o'clock, definitely quitting time. Back off the tuning. Not out here. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do.